Hi, this is Nicole Roberts-Jones, and welcome to Amplify Your Brilliance. What I know for sure is that one of life's greatest gifts will meet you when you go after your more. And so here is where I share with you thought-provoking insight and behind-the-curtain conversations with women who have reached the pinnacle of success because they went after their more. And I really want you to get this. One idea from these episodes can make a remarkable difference, not just in your business, your career, but in your life. Also, make sure you join the conversation in our Facebook group. Go to thebrilliancetribe.com. Now grab your pen as we begin today's session of Amplify Your Brilliance. Hello, hello, and welcome to this episode of Amplify Your Brilliance. So I'm going to tell you off the bat, I have to contain my excitement because I have one of my absolute best great girlfriends on the line. And so she's already got me excited from the pre-conversation. So please let me introduce to some and welcome for others, Miss Jackie Conrad. Now, let me tell you about Jackie before she starts going in. So Jackie, for over 25 plus years, has helped organizations expand their reach, connect with their audiences and live their mission plus elevate their brand. Now she is the vice president of marketing communications and yes, public relations at Cambridge college. Now in her role, she oversees the marketing initiatives for not one, not two, but five locations, which includes all print digital virtual communications in order to elevate the college's brand. Now prior to joining Cambridge college, which you're going to hear all about it. She founded her own business. She was the founder and CEO of De La Cruz communications a consulting firm that specialized in multicultural marketing and advertising, ethnic media relations, community relations, fundraising, and event management. Now, listen, as if that was enough. Now, keep in mind, y'all, I'm only reading a fourth of her her resume, her bio, right? She also served as the executive director of the Latino Professional Network. She's on the board of directors for Mass Mentorship, Jane Doe. She's an advisory board member of Amplify Latin- Latinx, which champions the advancement of Latinas for executive leadership roles, board and commissions. Now, listen, I can go on and on about various roles she plays. Now, Jackie operates in everything things she does from her passion to be of service to encourage empower and mobilize underserved communities to break socioeconomic racial and educational barriers to success so now y'all know why she's one of my great girlfriends please welcome miss jackie hey girl Hey, hi, Nikki. I want to know who that person is. Can I meet her, please? Okay. Well, into the truth, when you hear your own bio, you're like, you know, we often don't stop and realize all that we have done because we're always so focused on what's next. And so I told this to Jackie out of the gate because, you know, powerful women like this want to know what questions you're going to ask them. And I was trying not to tell her because she's so dynamic that she doesn't need to get ready for this, right? But the thing I, I was telling Jackie before we got, Well, before I hit record, the thing that I think is so yummy about your story, Jackie, is when you started De La Cruz Communications, you had a successful career in corporate and you were a single mom and you left that big paycheck. Listen, she had just bought a house too. Okay, left that big paycheck to go out on your own. So tell us a little bit about why. Like, what did you even have to say yes to? And as I'm going all the way in already, y'all out the gate to leave that cushy check to go out and start your own thing you know even hearing you say that nicole i just remember how scared i was it was such a a trying time in my life it Mm -hmm. was it was indeed very scary to go out leave behind the security of a job you know the nine to five having that paycheck and as you said i had a i had a baby my son at that time was three years old Mm -hmm. and it was scary but i remember having this feeling in the pit of my soul that where I was at the corporate job was not enough, that Mm. I was at that time being a slave to that paycheck and I wasn't happy. I knew it wasn't my place, but more importantly and above all, I was focusing on what, on the type of life that I wanted to create for my son. Mm. So my decision really centered around my son. What did I want for him? What type of mother did I want to be and what type of life I wanted for him to have? And the first thing I remember is that I did not want to be the nine to five, the mom that was rushing to go get my son, because I was always afraid that he would be left in a stool step, you know, (laughs) at the end of the day, waiting for me to pick him up. um, Because, you know, they would close down the doors at at 5.15 or 5.10. And it's just not what I wanted. I wanted more for my baby. And Mm. that was the impetus for me being so bold to step out in faith 
and, and do my business. And what a bold move. And so even as you shared that, what came to me is two things. Now, I know her baby, who is a grown married man with a good job, right? And listen, it has his own mortgage mm-hmm. of his own. And I know that's <laughs> only because, and when I look at the big bold moves that he and his wife make, you know, and he's what, 20, what, seven, 26? Yeah, 27. Well, that was a good guess. So, And I'm horrible with numbers, y'all. So at 27, I want you guys to get this. This young brother, how many 27-year-olds do you know not only has one mortgage, but the brother had the nerve to buy the house next door, okay, and renting it out. So that rent pays his mortgage. I'm only telling you this not to be all in his business. I hope he doesn't listen to this and get mad at me that I'm sharing all his business because he probably didn't know that I knew that. But here's why I'm sharing that with you. (laughs) That big leap you took 25 years ago or 24, however many years ago that was, really was was the catalyst to him seeing how he can make his money work for him. Mm, girl, let's, are we starting to, to praise here up in church? Because that is so, so true. And you know what's mm-hmm. so interesting? It's just as you said initially, we are so focused on working, on doing the day-to-day, the daily grind, yeah. just doing our job. We hunker down, we put our heads down, and we work, 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 work. Mm-hmm. But in that instance, Nicole, you're so you're so right. When I think about where my son is today, I never stopped to think that he was watching me all the time. He was watching what I was doing. At that time, I was going through a divorce, trying to raise my baby boy. I was, you know, finishing my master's degree at the same time. And then I was purchasing this first, my first home. Wait, 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 before you say anything, I want y'all to hear what she just said. She was doing all at the same time. Now I'm listening to that. I can think of stress. She quit her, her, her steady paycheck which was no small paycheck, by the way, y'all quit the job, Mm -hmm. started her own business. Son is three. She's getting her master's degree all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was one of the most stressful times in my life. But yet, as I was embarking on this journey, I knew that that was what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. I knew that that was where I was supposed to be, despite the fact that there was so much going on. And half the time, y'all, I did not even know what I was doing. I mm-hmm. just knew that there was this picture that I saw. I had this vision of having, of being there for my son every day, that mm-hmm. I would take him to school, come back, run my business, and then be able to pick him up at three o'clock at school. That was my goal. That's all I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I worked backwards. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, here's the goal. Now, what do I need to do in order to do that? And when you have that goal in front of you, then nothing stops you because the obstacles, they really become obsolete. Hmm. because you're so focused on that goal. And for me, my son was my focus. That was my goal. And I knew that I would do whatever I needed to do to get that. And, you know, by the grace of God, I did. And here's the thing. I love that she said obstacles become obsolete. Somebody needs to tweet that. I'm just saying obstacles become obsolete because literally many of us, this is me included. And there's times I'm sure in your life too, that you let a lot of obstacles stop you. But this time, There was something, and you said this earlier, there was something, it was like there was something in the pit of your belly that said, no, you've got to do it. So how did you muscle up the courage, you know, in the midst of all that fear? It's like, how did you, if you can go back to that, you know, I'm not going to say age, right? But younger Jackie, (laughs) (laughs) if you go back to who she was 20 something years ago and think about, you know, single mom mortgage to pay y'all and here's the thing I want you to get when you're a single mom you got a mortgage to pay and you come from the hood and Jackie and I we could do a whole conversation about both of us being from the hood she's from Washington Heights I'm from Mm -hmm. South Central LA right so we didn't grow up knowing how to do this thing is why I'm bringing it up okay so you don't know how to do it because nobody's done it before you but something inside of you is telling you to do it so you have nobody to lean on to ask for advice you just got to figure it out so in the midst of having to figure it out how the heck did you do that you know, that's a good point because, again, I always look back and I think about how I did that and, and these different paths that I was embarking upon. And, yes, I didn't have anyone to help me. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. No one in my family had done this before. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom was also a single mom. And, you know, growing up in Washington Heights, no one bought houses. We lived in, mm-hmm. in tiny apartments. So mm-hmm. this was all new to me. And, again, I think it's when you think about what it is that you want, when you put that carrot in front of you, and you see that vision, you see it, you feel it, you want it, then you figure it out. So what I did was along the road, I would just ask people. Mm -hmm. So when I started my plan, I said, okay, if I want to be here, I want to own a house a year from now, what do I need to do to be financially secure? Mm -hmm. So that was my first step. It's like, how, if I'm going to start my own business, how will I support my son? How will I pay for the rent, the car note, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So I made a plan and I thought backwards. And the first thing I did was I wrote down all of my credit card debt. 
And girl, that was not pretty. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay. I wrote down a, a spreadsheet, all of my credit card debt, and then I broke it down every month, how much I had to pay that debt down so that within eight months, my credit score will also be good to allow mm. me to buy a house. Mm. So, you know, that was tough, girl. I could mm-hmm. not go shopping, no shoes, right. no clothes, <laughs> nothing. It was a sacrifice that I had to make. Mm-hmm. But you know what? We have to make those sacrifices in order to gain those treasures at the end of the road. Mm. And I did that. And it was tough. And it was hard. But at the end of the day, I did it. And then I found a realtor. And this realtor helped me. You know, she was teaching me the business. How do you do this? And then I did my financial planning. And then I was checking my FICO score. So many of us do not know about our FICO score Mm -hmm. and the importance of that. That was like another language for me. Mm. So in each path, I reached out to someone that I knew would help me. And at the end of the day, I put it all together. I figured it out. And I just I just kept walking. I Mm. just kept walking. Mm. And and it worked out. It panned out. We're going to stop here and take a quick commercial break. And we'll be back for more. Let me ask you, have you ever felt like something is missing in your career? See, whether you love your job or you absolutely hate it, guess what? There's more for you. Or maybe you want to begin a business simply to get paid for what you know when you're not sure where to begin. Or maybe you have started your business and you're not generating the income you desire and quite frankly, that you deserve. See, regardless of where you are in any of those areas, what I've found is that all you really need is clarity, or actually what you need is a roadmap toward living in your purpose and getting paid for it. So go to becomingroadmapquiz.com. See, I created the Becoming Roadmap Quiz so that you can get the clarity you need on where you are and the steps you need to move forward now. So let's get you headed in the right direction on all the ways you should get paid for what you know. Go to becomingroadmapquiz.com. As I'm listening to you say this, I think what I hear so many people say, and and I'm sharing this with you ladies that are listening, because this may be you, that, you know, I got to step out on faith. And, and, and here's where, where I say, okay, God, yeah, God does tell us we have to have faith. But you realize there's a whole book in the Bible called Proverbs. That's a book of wisdom, right? And so I hear what I hear you saying is you knew you had this long term goal of doing your own thing. But you knew you also had to set up some things first in order to get to that. And you took baby steps. So first, let me pay off my debt. Right. So you got strategic with how you going you were going to get to your end goal of being able to really live this life you really wanted. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, God does plant these seeds in our hearts. Right. And these visions. But Mm -hmm. you also have to meet them halfway. You can do all the praying. You can do all the fasting. (laughs) But you have to take steps and you have to meet them halfway. So for me, it was like, okay, he's given me that vision. But now he's also saying, Jackie, I'm giving you the vision, but you have to work halfway. You have to meet me halfway, girl. I will give you the dream, but I want to see you work towards it. And I hustled towards it. And, and, And it was done. And when you have that, when you have that burning desire in your heart, believe me, nothing stops you. Because any, every time I came up, you know, um, every time I faced an obstacle, I figured it out because you want that prize at the end of the journey. You want Mm -hmm. it so badly. And of course, for me, every day, it was seeing my son looking into those Mm -hmm. little big brown eyes, you know, and it's like, okay, I am doing this for him, which takes it off of me, right? Because it wasn't even about me. It wasn't even about me. It was about my son. Mm. And then even beyond that, when I look at some of the work you've been able to do for the, I think, um, I'm not going to start naming clients because I'm going to mess up names, right? But just thinking of the big organizations, both inside and outside of Boston, that you've really been able to affect change in. And when I talk about change, I'm talking about, now listen, Boston is not, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to probably get in trouble, not the most friendliest place for black and brown folks, right? And so Mm -hmm. but when I look at the work you've done to be able to move that needle forward over the last 20 plus years, it's it's remarkable, right? So in the middle of all the stuff she just talked about with her son, just her, you being able to stand in the gap. I remember, uh, was that 2010 when you helped the Urban League put together the State of the Black um, Community yeah. event? Yeah, um, State of Black Boston. Yeah, and just thinking about how big that was, just that one event. I can go on and on, y'all. And and I'm just, it just amazes me how you would never know behind the scenes all the stuff that Jackie was going through on a personal level that she just shared with you. And then to be a, a frontline soldier on the fight for black and brown here in Boston. It's amazing to me. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I think that that event was maybe one of my first. I think that was my first large 
large scale, if not my second. Mm. But what is interesting about that, when I think back to my journey, my, my professional journey, my career, and even just personal, the things that I went through personal, mm-hmm. I remember thinking that, so God always gives you, you're always presented with these challenges, right? Mm-hmm. And when you're going through them, you know, it's always like, I don't know why I'm going through this, Lord, you know, what happened? I thought I made the right decision, <laughs> yada, 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 you know, mm-hmm. but you know what, you just go through it because it is what it is. So you can either become immobilized by the challenge that's in front of you, or you figure it out, you figure it out. Mm-hmm. When I did the event planning in my business, which as you know, Nicole, was never a part of my, my plan. I never planned to do event planning mm-hmm. when I set out to do my own business. But this is one of those instances that literally fell on my lap. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just fell on my lap. Right. So you're at the point where, what do I do? I say no to this opportunity, walk away from it, or I take it and do what I've always done all of my life. Mm-hmm. I figured it out <laughs> as I was going along the way. Mm-hmm. But I also realized that the skills that I acquired during that one year when I was, when I was, you know, making that move from working for someone else to being an entrepreneur, all of those skills that I did in buying my house and, you know, paying down my debt, my debt, learning to be financially savvy, all of those things that I planned over the course of that 12 months are the skills that I needed to become a successful business owner and a successful event planner. Mm. So you're going through these things. And when we're going through these trials and tribulations, we don't understand it. But little do we know that maybe down the road where we're being directed to, we're going to use those skills. And that has happened for me. Mm. When I think about the past, all things that I've had to learn on the fly, things that I didn't want to learn, I learned, but now I'm using them on the other side of of my career. Mm. So I always encourage people that when you're in the middle of of the thick stuff, of the bad stuff, just go through it because there's always a lesson to be learned. And down the road, it serves a purpose. Mm. It serves a purpose. And I know that's not easy to to accept because Mm-mm. sometimes these trials and tribulations are, are tough, you know, and and I know there are a lot of single moms out there as well that are trying to do the same thing, working for someone, but they want to be an entrepreneur. Right. It's tough. It's tough. But it all comes together. Somehow mm. it all comes together. And, you know, as you're talking, you know, when I think about anybody that's done anything great, right? You, and, and one of my ultimate people I always think about is Martin Luther King. Now, obviously, I never met Martin Luther King, but I'm going to tell you, I don't know what y'all were doing at 24, but I was in a club at 24. I was not trying to lead a civil rights nothing. OK, so the <laughs> fact that at 24, he gets invited to a meeting. And, you know, just to be a participant, not to lead any kind of effort, he gets invited to a meeting. And at the meeting, he gets voted to lead the the um, it just went out of my head. I'm having a senior moment. Right. But the point is this, y'all. I want you to think about the fact that it's easier to say no. You think in that moment, the harder thing is to say yes. But who you become as a result of your yes is far better than staying in your no. And I'm saying that because you know, that is. So true. And I love it because everything you've said, Jackie, everything we see you now is uh, everything we're seeing is your yes. It's every time you have said yes in the face of fear, in the face of uncertainty, in the face of, oh, hell, I don't know how to do this. In the face of everything else that could have stopped you from doing it. Who you are today is because of your yes. That mm-hmm. is absolutely true. And one of the things that even now, I mean, I still go it. I still go through this on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you're asked to do something. And every time you're asked to do something in your positions, you're stepping out of out of your zone. But even now, I'm at a point in my life now where I am once again presented with with two major opportunities that will mm-hmm. change my life once again. So what does that mean? Right. So when I when I think about that, I ask myself, I go through the process of asking myself, OK, so what happens if I say yes? What happens? The first thing that you think about is fear. Saying mm-hmm. yes to the unknown is very scary. Mm-hmm. It is indeed very scary. You have to be bold. You have to be courageous. And above all, you have to step out in faith. But if you do not say yes and you shrink back and Mm. you go back into your cocoon of comfort, what will happen then? Will anything in your situation change? Because now you choose to say no out of fear. So, okay, you're going to say no out of fear. You're going to pass up on this opportunity. What will change in your current situation, especially you know, we, we're in certain positions and jobs and, and situations where we know we're tired or we know that we're ready for something else. Mm-hmm. And then when it's presented to you, we get scared. We shrink yeah. back and we say, no, this is comfortable. Let me stay here. But you have to ask yourself, what will change in your current situation a month, two months, six months or a year from now? If the answer is nothing, 
then that is your answer. Then you choose Mm -hmm. to stay in your situation and not change and not grow. But if you say yes, it's exactly like you're saying. You move forward. You step out in faith. You have to put on your big girl pants, move forward in (laughs) blind faith. But then you remind yourself that, you know, the courageous step that you took at the other side of that is that you meet the person that you were always destined to be. And the question is, do you want to pass up on that? I know that's right. Do you want to regret it? I always say, I don't want to get to my, you know, to the, to the pearly gates. I don't want God to say to me, girl, what happened? What what, what happened? Right. I want him to say job. Well done. I am proud of you. You did it. Right. Or as my husband would say, right. you did the damn thing. And yes, I'm saying damn and God in the same <laughs> sentence. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. You did it. I gave you the opportunity and you mm-hmm. took it and mm-hmm. you did it. And mm-hmm. that is so good. You know, my, my mom always used to tell me, she says, you know, what God has for you, no one can take away from you. Hmm. And I always think about that. Hmm. I always remember that because even in the times when I've been so blessed with an opportunity, I ask myself, but why, why me, God, why me? Hmm. And I think about my mom saying, you know, because it was meant for you. But Mm -hmm. the other greater question that we always ask, have to ask ourselves is why not me? Right. Why not me? Why must I pass up and give it to someone else? Why must I let someone else bask in that blessing? Mm -hmm. And why not me? So when you're presented with something, it's that's your gift. You are supposed to take on that gift because it was created, especially for you, because you have the skills, you have the talent, or you have the drive Mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. So, I always want people, I want people to be reminded of that, that when you're presented with an opportunity, it's because God has given it to you with a nice, beautiful pink bow on top of it. (laughs) And the question is whether or not you're going to take it, you know, it's like mission impossible, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you willing to take on this mission? Right. And if it's yes, then prepare to be amazed. Yep. And, and, you know, as you're talking, the thing that keeps coming in my mind, I was talking to a client of, of mine and, and she works in HR and um, she's shifting her HR genius into coaching. And she shared something with me and I'm giving her credit. I'm not going to say her name because I didn't ask her, could I give her credit? But here's the thing that I think is so interesting. And this is it keeps coming up as you're talking, Jackie, is when men get an opportunity and they don't know what they're doing, they just say, OK, knowing they'll figure it out. Why do we as women say no to stuff? Because we're like, but I'm not sure if I can do that instead of like you have done. And every example Jackie has given, she said yes and not know how the heck to do it. When the majority of women will say no, because they can't figure it out. That is so true. And that happens. I'm sure we experience that everywhere. Right. It is very, very true that for some reason, when we're up or we apply for a job, if we see all of the job descriptions, if we have, you know, seven or even eight out of the 10 requirements, Mm-hmm. we say, no, we can't do it because we don't have the remaining two or three. Right. We always say we, and I, I believe Nicole, that part of that is this fear of disappointing others and mm-hmm. perfectionism, mm-hmm. right? We're raised to be good little girls. Yep. We're raised to always be obedient. You know, don't, don't jump up and down because you're going to, you know, get your dress dirty. <laughs> We've always been raised to be these good girls that we're complacent, we say yes, we speak up when we're supposed to, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Whereas boys, on the other hand, you know, they're rambunctious, they're yep. praised for being such bad boys and for being um, brave and, you know, doing things that, you know, ultimately will hurt them. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case for us. Mm-hmm. And that's unfortunate because we carry that. I know for me, that has been my my issue, if you will, personally, right. that I grew up in a household where we had to be perfect. Yep. And, and we carry that. And I think a lot of women still do carry that. And we have to get to a point where, listen, you know, we are everything. We are always more than enough because God doesn't make mistakes, right? Ooh, he never right. makes mistakes. And he's not going to start with you. He's not going to start with <laughs> me or anyone else listening to this podcast. Right. We're all here for a reason. But I would just want people to be reminded that, you know, we are more than enough. We're perfect for that moment in time. We're needed by those that are in your circles, both professionally and personally. And even socially. So I think I've come to this point in my life as I continue to mature. You know, as I didn't say, as I continue to get older. As we get seasoned, (laughs) girl. As we get seasoned. (laughs) Because I figure I'm marinating really good right now, right? (laughs) (laughs) I know. As we get seasoned, you realize realize that the things that you've been presented are always meant for you. And you can. Mm. You can do it. You have to have a strong circle around you, too. I Mm want to make a point of that. As long as you have a strong group of people that will surround you that will lift you up, will, and it will always be honest with you, guy is the limit, girl. Whew. So, Jackie, you've given us so much. Now, listen, we're almost out of time, believe it or not. So 
if you had to leave with either your favorite best advice someone's ever given you, your favorite quote, you know, just something to leave the ladies to think about and ponder on, what would that be? So my favorite quote is always your focus is your reality. Um, Meaning, you know, if you keep focusing on the negative things in your life, you will only think about the negative things in your life, right? So, but if we focus on the possibilities and all the good things, then, and that's, that, that goes along with every day being grateful for something. I know mm. people, you're hearing it, and it may sound corny, but it is so true, especially in the midst of any trials and tribulations that you're going to. It's so easy for us to focus on the problems that we're facing every day. Why am I going through this? Why you know, do I not make enough money to do this? Why have I not found the husband or you know, lover of my life? Right. But if you focus on the blessings of every day that, hey, you're alive. Mm. You woke up today. You have a roof over your head. You do have a job. It may not be the job you like, but you have a paycheck that helps you live, mm-hmm. helps you pay for the car. So I think if we folk, we need to focus on the reality of the blessings of our lives, focus on the good things as you now also focus on the future mm-hmm. and where you want to go. And the best advice that I've ever received is to always ask yourself, you know, why not you? So mm-hmm. you can either stay put and never know what could have been. Or you can, like I said, put on your big girl pants and discover the person <laughs> you're meant to be. Hmm. So, um, and this came from from one of um, a, a mentor of mine that I, I respect greatly. And she always says, when you're asked or presented with a big opportunity, first ask yourself, why not you? And then put on your, she actually said, put on your big girl panties and then move forward and conquer the world. <laughs> well, look, um, so those would be the two. Right. And listen, Jackie, you are an example. Look, if we opened up the dictionary, you should be in the picture of big girl panties because you've been living in yours. And so thank you so much for, for, you know, I had to make her laugh at the end, y'all. So thank you so much for not just creating a path for your son because he's living it, but just being a light on a path that all of us be lifted up into all that's possible just by watching your journey. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. This has been such an amazing opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, girl. Love you, girl. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Amplify Your Brilliance. Now, I want you to walk away from these sessions with value. So answer either one or all three of these questions. Number one, what was your greatest takeaway? Number two, what will you do different as a result of what you heard? See, you may have heard something you've already heard, or you may have learned something new. Either way, don't take the insight that was shared with you for granted. So commit to doing one thing different as a result of what you heard. Number three, what was confirmation for you? What did you hear that confirmed you're on the right path? See, I want you to take a moment and celebrate you. Too often in our journey, we focus on what we're not doing and we forget to celebrate what we are doing. So I want you to share with us something that showed you that you're on the right path. Now again, share. Share either answer number one, what was your greatest takeaway? Number two, what will you do different? Or number three, what was confirmation for you? And share it in our Facebook community. Go to thebrilliancetribe.com and use the hashtag Amplify Your Brilliance. See, each experience we encourage, support, and celebrate as a community, it allows us to expand in possibility and wisdom, in encouragement and love. Now, we've invited you into this community to deepen our journey with being the answer somebody needs and being committed to your next level. So until the next time, be extraordinary, be unapologetic, be bodaciously you, go and amplify.